Father's house, in the Father's house, and He says who we are, He declares who you are, and He's never said a bad word about you. He only says good things about you because He is for you. In Jesus' name, we're in the house this morning. Good to be here, isn't it? 1st of July? Welcome to the 1st of July. Here we are, we're moving closer and closer to Christmas. Thank you. Move around, bring the manifesto camera.
echo of the car. Sick of land. Jesus is sending us, he's commissioning us this morning. Each one of us is calling to be a vision builder. He doesn't want us to join our own strength. He wants us to go with his strength. He wants us to go because together we are the body of Christ. And we've eaten the bread this morning, we signify that. He wants us to go with his lifeblood flowing through our very veins this morning. Would you drink with me? Hey, by the way, how many of you got our app? How many of you got our app? 
hands up. How many years? If you haven't got our app, you need to get our app. And my latest blog is on our app. I'm going to blog all the time. It's about the very thing. And I think uh, it's the best information, best blog I've ever written. And it's the best information. Uh, it, it backs up what that man was just saying and more. All right, so check out my blog. If you haven't got the app and you don't know how to get the app, find someone that you know that will be able to help you. Maybe me, maybe Catherine, maybe somebody or other else who will help you get the app so that you can then keep up to date with what's going on in the life of the church. Well, we're in our second message this morning in the heart of a vision builder. Last Sunday, uh, we started this series and I brought you the first aspect of the heart of a vision builder. Uh, every born again believer uh, should be on God's team, uh, building for him according to his vision, the vision that he reveals to you. And secondly, as a church in October uh, this year, coinciding with our annual partnership uh, event that we have, which is usually the last Sunday in October, we'll be launching the Vision Builders Initiative. And at that event, yep, yep, it will have uh, International Food Fest. We like to eat. We're a church that likes to eat. We like to eat all sorts of different foods. So International Food Fest on that very Sunday. Uh, and uh, the visiting speaker on that occasion will be Pastor Daniel Indrajaya from the Rocks Church. You won't want to miss that either. And Partnership Sunday at that very event will become Vision Sunday. So last Sunday we noted that the heart of Vision Builder is one who moves forward with full assurance and confidence that the Lord's plans are for well-being, uh, for prosperity, and the good of humanity. And he does what God cares for us. He wants the best for us. He wants the best for every person on planet Earth, whether we're uh, in church or not, and uh, we're part of his plan. So today we want to take note of the fact that the heart of a vision builder is one who asks, Lord, what can I do for you? And the heart of a vision builder is one who declares, here I am, Lord, send me. Both the question and the declaration are responses that you can find in your Bible, individuals receiving divine revelations, having a divine encounter. The Apostle Paul is the first one I want to talk about. Uh, he started off as a Jesus hater, as, as a church hater, and a hater of those who follow Jesus. Until he had this divine encounter and a divine revelation on his way to persecute believers. I think about that because you probably know someone who, who is a Jesus hater and, and has got no time for church. There's loads of them in our community. You probably know people like that. Well, that was the Apostle Paul until he had this divine encounter. Uh, you may well know one, someone that is a, a, a person who has no time for church, no time for Jesus, no time for Jesus' followers. Well, Jesus turned that person around and the people that you know that fit into that category, Jesus can turn them around. Acts chapter 9, verses 3 to 6 should be on the screen any moment. Uh, the Apostle Paul uh, writes uh, or about the Apostle Paul as he neared Damascus on his journey. Uh, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him and he fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul. Why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. Years later, years later, the, uh, the Apostle Paul has turned around, his life has been turned around. He is now, he, he is now an ambassador for Jesus Christ and for his church. And uh, he has got the occasion to give his testimony to the crowds in Jerusalem just before he is arrested and sent to Rome. Acts 22, verses 7 to 10, 13 chapters on. I fell to the ground, said the apostle, and I heard a voice say to me, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord, I asked. I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting, he replied. My companions saw the light, but they did not understand the voice of him who was speaking to me. What shall I do, Lord? That's a good question that everyone here should be asking. What shall I do for you, Lord? What shall I do, Lord? I get up, the Lord said, and go into Damascus. And there you'll be told all that you have been assigned to do. When you are assigned to do something, you have an assignment. Paul was given an assignment. Paul had a divine revelation and he was given a divine assignment. I believe that every born-again believer, everyone that surrendered their life to Christ, everyone that said yes to Jesus, said, I want to follow you, has been given a divine assignment. 
Uh, part of being a vision builder, which is what we're talking about, is to be ready for your specific divine assignment and take it up. That's what we're talking about this morning. The second divine uh, revelation and assignment that I want to talk about this morning was received by the prophet Isaiah. You may not have heard the scripture before, but if you haven't, you will hear it now. Isaiah 6, 1, 1 to 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on the throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple, and above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and the other two they were flying, and they were calling out to one another. Next page. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voice, the doorpost and the threshold shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Oh, woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. And then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the, with tongs from the altar. And with it he touched my mouth, and he said, See, this is touch your lips, your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who would go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. The prophet Isaiah had this divine encounter and the divine revelation, and his response was, Here am I, Lord, send me. The heart of a vision builder is, Here am I, Lord, send me. That's the heart of a vision builder. Two divine revelations and two responses. The Apostle Paul's response, uh, Acts 22, verse 10, uh, what shall I do for you? Uh, and, and the response by God to his, his question, uh, Acts 22, 14, get up, the Lord said, and go into Damascus, and then you will be told what you have been. Thank you. A sign to do. A sign. Uh, uh, God gave the Apostle Paul an assignment. God has given this church a specific assignment which may be just a little bit different than the assignments he has given to other churches. It will be similar because we all have the Great Commission uh, to, to, to make disciples uh, by leading them to Christ and baptizing them and teaching them. We've all got that, but God has given just a little tweak to every church that's so all going to be just a little bit different. Uh, God had given Paul an assignment, he has given you an assignment, he has given this church an assignment. Acts 22, 14, God has chosen you. God has chosen Acts 22, 15, you shall be his witness, it says. You think the, the word witness, you know, it, it's, a, it's a word of the law court. Uh, sometimes you will be called to be a witness in a law court. I've only ever been to court twice. Once when I was called to be a witness, and once when my younger son was called to be a witness, and I went with him. I swear on the Bible, if you're okay with that. And, and then, then they ask questions, and you give testimony, you give witness. If you saw something, if you had something to say about the individual or the situation, that's the law court thing. The idea of a witness here is there is a divine law court, but you are witnessing, you are testifying to others who don't yet know Jesus about Jesus. And the way that you do that is just by living your life. And, and you know, one of the first and most important ways is, is, is Sundays. Uh, those who say they belong to church but go someplace else on Sundays are not very good witnesses because they are not saying, I go to church. When I go to the dome tomorrow morning, which is probably what I'll do at 7 o'clock, they will ask me, what did you do on the weekend? And I will say, I went to church yesterday. And they will say, what did you do last night? And I'll go, I went to church again. And they go, did they make you do that? And well, if there was any of them doing the making, it would be me. No, I just wanted to go. And the people were there, obviously just wanted to come. Uh, they, they didn't say, well, I've got another plan, a better plan, and I'm going to follow that plan. Uh, they go, I want to go because I want to meet to worship God. It's the very first thing. It, it, they, no one may ever ask, but they'll know. They'll see your car setting off, and they'll see you when you went too far and had to go round the roundabout and back that way to get here. How many did that? Yeah, it was you. Me too. Me too. I got that liar. I look, what are we doing? We just want to come back and see the roundabout, but we'll go back again. They will see you drive off. They'll know what you're up to. They go to church. They go, that, that's, that, that's a church person. That's a church family. 
Now, that's a church woman, that's a church man. Uh, I, I was at a function last night at, uh, at Steel Tree Restaurant, and it was just such a Christian event. It was a 50th wedding anniversary for a couple from this church. And everything there was Jesus. If you belonged to that family and you didn't yet belong to Jesus, you would have felt embarrassed and out of place right there last night. And, and, and I, I got to do a gig there because the God that's going to do the gig didn't turn up. So it's, would, would, you, would, you, would you participate in the ceremony? So I did. I wanted to pray loud because I wanted all the staff there to hear my voice. And now I was a God person. That's testifying. That's testifying. If the only time you use the name of Jesus is when you hit your thumb with the hammer, that's not testifying. But if you talk about Jesus in a positive way in other situations and circumstances, that's a testifying, that's a, that's a witness. And God will, you will be used by God for His purposes. Acts 26 verse 18, to turn their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are what? Sanctified by faith in me. And that is what the heart of a vision builder is about. So back to Isaiah, chapter 6, here am I, send me. God gave Isaiah a message for the people. And, and I've got to tell you, you've got to, got to read your Bible and, and read it like you've never read it before, because on the surface, this is a <coughs> stranger's message. I'd have never thought that God would have given a message like this to Isaiah. Listen to it. Isaiah 6, 9 and 10. Uh, be ever hearing he said go and tell these people be ever hearing but never understanding be ever seeing but never perceiving make the heart of this people calloused make their ears dull and close their eyes otherwise they might see with their eyes hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and be healed and see, if I'm myself, I, I want to say to God, that's an odd message, Lord, that you want me to give the people. I think you've stuffed this one up, Lord. I think what you really meant to say was, you're going to see and you're going to perceive and you're going to understand. And if you've got a hard heart, it's going to get soft. And uh, then you're going to open your eyes and hear with your ears, understand how to get healed. Isn't that the message you wanted, Lord, you go, no. No, it's, I've told you what I wanted. I, I want their eyes and ears and minds closed, and they're not going to get saved or healed. That's what I'm telling you. To I thought, well, that's an odd message. I thought, I've heard it before somewhere. <coughs> I think I've heard that message before. And I thought, I know where I've heard it. Jesus said it. And if Jesus said it, uh, to his apostles and if God said it to the prophet Isaiah then I think it's probably a message for us here am I sent me and you want me to tell them their ears are closed and their eyes are closed and they're, they're dumb and they're not even going to get healed right? Yeah, well, no, not quite like that this is how Jesus said it Mark 4, 10 to 12 uh, when he was alone that the twelve and the others around him asked him about the parables. He told them the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to those on the outside, everything is said in parables. So that they may be ever seeing but never perceiving, and ever hearing but never understanding, otherwise they might turn and be forgiven. So Jesus used the teaching from Isaiah's assignment and commission uh, to explain to his disciples that when you do see and understand, when you do hear and understand, when you do perceive and find the salvation and the healing, it's because God has opened your eyes, God's opened your ears, God's opened your heart, and God's done a number on you. And without God doing a number, nothing's going to happen. <coughs> uh, and, and so that's what God said to Isaiah. And Jesus said this right in the aftermath of telling the parable about the soils. And once he'd said that, he went back to the parable of the soils and did the parable of the soils again. You know the parable of the soils, but this is the one that God gave to Isaiah, this is the one he's giving to us today. Uh, there were four kinds of soils. The very first soil he called the path. 
And he says, you know, uh, the sower sows seed and it will enter the path and uh, the bird's going to snatch it away so it's never going to grow because the path's too hard and presumably the path is the path where the farmer walks up and down sowing seed. So his very own footsteps are making that harder and harder. His very own footsteps are causing the callous to come there. His very own message. Jesus says, you see, uh, that's like the sower is the preacher, the sower is the gospel person, the sower is the person who's testifying, he's sowing gospel seeds, uh, but it, it falls on high ground, it falls on a pathway. He said, and the devil snatches it away because it's so hard, that person's heart is so hard to the gospel message, the devil snatches away the seed, it's never going to grow. And he says the second soil is like thin, low, sandy low on limestone rock. And uh, the sower sows the seed, and the seed, because it's, it is good soil, but it's only that deep, and it immediately, the first shower rain, that soil germinates, puts out the roots, and then the sun comes out, and the sun comes out and burns it off. And it's never going to bear fruit at all. It's burned up. And Jesus said, you know, that's like, that's, that's like uh, when people, they get excited, you know, they're in a good setting, you give the altar call, they all come forward and they go, yes, yes, I'll go through the waters of baptism. They do, and then some tough times come. The tough times come and people give them grief about the fact they're going to church or they got other stuff, family stuff that kind of draws them away and, and, and there's no root and just their, their Jesus relationship just burns off to the ground, it's gone. He said the third soil. So I was sowing. <laughs> it's a bit like our campus at the minute. We have the best crop of clover on our campus at the minute that you're ever likely to see. Annually we spray it off at this time of the year. You can get a dry day or two. Uh, but see, with that, the grass that we want to be there, the lawn grass, uh, our clover will, will, will suffocate it. And the farmer in this third soil, he sowed his seed, but there were weeds and thorns there in this seed, and it choked them out. And Jesus said, you know, uh, that, that's like life. You, you, you put down, you say yes to Jesus, you get baptized, you sign up for all the classes and all the activities, and then stuff happens. He says, the cares of this world, all the activities that we want to get involved in. And all the activities choke out Jesus' activities. Because they're not Jesus' activities. He says, and, and, and the cares of the world and the activities of the world and, and, and getting, think of too much about money. Just choke out the good seed. And there'll never be a crop. He said, yeah, there's a, a fourth soil. It's a good soil. No weeds in this one. It's got depth in this soil, it's not a pathway, it's no like limestone underneath. And he said that the, the farmer sowed his seed in this good soil that came up and there were three different applications to this. He said there was a crop that bore a crop of 30 fold. And there was one that bore a crop of 60 fold. And then there was one that bore a crop of 100 fold. We all want the 100 fold, don't we? But sometimes you're going to get weeds and thorns and sometimes you're going to get a 30-fold, sometimes a 60-fold, sometimes it's going to get very thin soil, other times it's going to be like concrete. He says you've got to sow the seed of the gospel anyway. The heart of a vision builder is one who has full confidence in being part of the Lord's plans for well-being, prosperity, a hope, and a future. The heart of a vision builder is one who says, Lord, what can I do for you? And one who declares, here I am, Lord, send me. And the Lord is looking for people who don't care what the soil is like. He'll take care of that. So just keep on sowing the seed. Keep on sowing the seed. And let me do the job. We get to partner with him in sowing gospel seeds on various soils. I think about some of the things that we've talked about with our vision builders that we're sowing into. You know, high school kids. We want to do more of that. Destiny Rescue. 
uh, rescuing girls and young women from sexual slavery in Southeast Asia. I think of the CREW, C-R-E-W, acronym, Christians Ready, Equipped and Willing. And uh, we sew into that so that people that are on bad times can find food and shelter right here in our region. I think of the kind of things that we sew into many, many more. Uh, Christians Against Poverty, Alpha classes, we sew into Alpha classes. Uh, we sew into so many different things and we want to do more of that, you know, regardless of the soil. Because those things aren't the soil, no, they're the vehicles that approach the soil. Some will start well and then quickly fade away. And even in good soil, there will be those who bring forth a, a 30 fold crop, some 60 fold crop, some 100 fold, regardless. I want to call your vision builders. I believe the majority of you will want to be that. Vision builders, uh, uh, we are called to sow gospel seeds regardless of the soil. We sow gospel seeds anyway, regardless of the soil. The Apostle Paul had a divine encounter and received a divine revelation and received an assignment to sow gospel seeds. The prophet Isaiah had a divine encounter and received a divine revelation and received a divine assignment to sow gospel seeds in regardless of what the soil was like, good, bad, and ugly. And if you have met Jesus Christ and genuinely received him, uh, that would be a divine encounter. That would be a divine encounter. And with that di divine encounter comes an assignment to sow gospel seeds. You go, well, Gordon, uh, we don't all have the gift of the gap like you. That's right. Well, actually, we're a team. We just need to support one another in this. We're a team of farmers sowing gospel seeds. We can all do this together as vision builders. Some soil will be fruitful, some will not. But the vision builder is called to sow gospel seeds anyway, regardless of the soils. And I believe when we do that, we will see a 30-fold, a 60-fold, and a 100-fold in Jesus' name. Father in heaven, this morning, I thank you for your word. Lord, there will be those whose ears are closed, whose eyes are closed, who have no perception, hearts don't receive it, but your, your ideal for each person is healing anyway and salvation anyway. We're going to sow you gospel seeds as vision builders. Thank you, Lord God. And Father, I want to pray for anyone in this house this morning. The seed has been sown. I want to pray for anyone that's not definitively made a commitment to you and said, Lord Jesus, I surrender to you. Father, for those people this morning, may they use this time, this space and this place, to decide for you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's stand church. We've got a song to sing. As we sing our song, if you're leading ministry this morning, you want to say, I, I just want to make a life with Jesus this morning. Come and stand up the front and we'll pray for you in Jesus' name. Let's sing. Just one word. Father, you want us to be those who sow gospel seeds. Just one word. And I'm changed. Lord, we want to be vision builders. We want to share your word just by the way we live. The things we do, the things we don't do. Just one word. And Lord, I pray for your word right now for those who are struggling with any issues that are going on in their lives, whether they would be financial issues, health issues, uh, relational issues, any other kind of issues. Just one word. Thank you, Father God, for the hearts and souls of every person here, that they might be changed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just a few things, people, before you move. Yep, we've got... Uh, We've got our Volunteers of the Month celebrations in the cafe this morning. <coughs> and uh, sausage sizzle, so don't be in a hurry to rush off. That should be good. We've got a great service back here tonight. We're looking at uh, uh, John's, John's first letter, at 1 John. And uh, John writes about Jesus because he <coughs> knew him, touched and spoke with him.
and so that's what we're looking at tonight. We we'll celebrate communion tonight too, and uh, I'd encourage you to come back tonight. Bring someone with you. Let's fill the house. Best place to be to finish your weekend is right here in Jesus' name. Be blessed. Have a fantastic day.